It's not even a year old car, BMW. How can something go wrong? I'm not $250,000 car, like. Hey guys, today we're here and we're reviewing this. The BMW 740LI. We have a impact 740 alloy and we're going to drive it today and we're going to go through all the bits and pieces which make this bmw's finest car and obviously rivals to the s-class to be the audi a8 and the lexus ls500 underneath the bonnet of the 740 alloy is a three liter turbocharged engine now there are a few different engines that you can get in the 7 series and that includes the 30d the 50i and the 60i now that 50i engine is the same engine in the X5 M that we drove. So you can only imagine how insane it would be in this car. And the 60i, that comes with a V12 turbo engine. So that would be bonkers. Now this car already has 250 kilowatts and 450 newton meters of torque. And it gets this huge car, 0 to 100 in 5.5 seconds. This is the long wheelbase, which means it's 14 centimeters longer in the regular version, which brings it up to over 5.2 meters long. Now the BMW has an optional M pack, and in this car it was selected. So that means it's got these huge 20 inch wheels, which surprisingly still make the car very comfortable to drive. Now the back here, we have a massive boot with the updated power lights, full LEDs across the back, which makes the car extremely beautiful at night and make sure that people know you are driving a seven series. And of course, when you do need to open the boot, you press the button and it's all automatic, as it should be. Now guys, we've jumped inside the car and it is appointed very nicely, very luxurious. You got all this leather-like material here and all these soft touch points here. It's very comfortable. You can set up your seat the way you like it and everything's intuitively where it should be. Over here, we've got our iDrive system as well. So that there is for the screen in front of us. You can see our reversing camera on and just quickly touching onto this reversing camera. It is so crystal clear. It is unbelievable and it shows a wide angle and as you turn the wheel it actually moves the camera with it i was shocked um, and of course you got the 360 degree camera as well if we click on menu we've got all our controls and settings and all of our widgets on the screen here which is really cool um, all of our climate control settings here on a few buttons on each side and all these touchpad buttons here too so your heated and ventilated seats the car even comes with a fragrance setting. Now, the car is fitted with two fragrances, where if I press this middle button, we've now got a choice of fragrance within the car. Like, that's, that's bougie stuff, BMW. Um, of course, all of our settings for our uh, music here. And this screen here is not only operated by the iDrive, it's also touchscreen, which means I can just Play around with it like this and then go into media and I can go into music collection, I can go back into home, go into navigation. It's just very intuitive this car, it's very well appointed and very smart and of course in the front we've got our heads up display, ambient lighting so you get to choose your color of mood lighting, uh, whether you're on purple or greens or blues or oranges and plenty of lighting in the back seats as well. And we've got these huge sunroofs as well. We've got sunroof for the driver and a sunroof for the back passengers, which is huge. It's bigger than the front sunroof. Now we are sitting here in the back, as you can see, and I am very comfortable. I've got my pillow here for ultimate softness goodness. And I have plenty of space. I could have a song and dance in here. It's insane. Now, First thing I want to do is I want to close all my sunshades because it is getting very hot in here. So I'm going to go press one button that's closing my sunroof, both the sunshades on the side and the back one. Like, how cool is that? And you know how I did it? So have a look at this. All from this middle screen here. And what's awesome about this middle screen is I don't have to keep it here. If I press this button, it provides me my little tablet, which means that if someone is sitting in the back with me, then I can just go ahead, close that up there, and 
That means I can have a third person sitting here and I can control everything I need to from this tablet. Now, other stuff you can control on this tablet. We can control all the medias. So we can change whether it's radio, Bluetooth, music collection, so on the hard drive or screen mirroring. From your Android phone, we can go to navigation and we can see where we're going, how fast we're going. And of course, how much fuel we're using, because that's very important as a passenger. <laughs> uh, and of course, the most important thing is car. So we can change all the settings here. And if I was to change, if I press here, I can change the seats, the seat controls. So I can actually click here. Well, actually, I actually got my seat positions here. So if I go seat position two, it's adjusting everything the way the number two wants to sit. So this person was sitting rather upright. Now this is very customizable and that's really cool. So if I put this button down, it's got our seat controls here. So I can actually adjust everything here, recline the seats and extend my seat and raise my headrest higher and lower. And of course you got lumbar support. This center headrest is manual. So you can't actually adjust it as a driver, you can't actually put all of them down, which can be quite irritating, especially if you don't have anyone sitting in the back. And as a driver, you can't see out the back window because you actually have to come to the back and press this button and then it folds down. And also the headroom is quite questionable. Now I'm not the tallest chap, I'm only five foot 11 and it only provides maybe an inch and a half of headspace extra in the car which I know the people in Europe are a tall people and unless you got the rear comfort package this is going to be quite small for most people and another cool feature that this back seat actually has you still have an ashtray like <laughs> that says a lot about the type of clients that BMW expects to have in the rear seat now anyways guys let's jump in the front and let's go for a drive we are driving the BMW 740Li and yes this is something else this is luxury it is soft it is it's got this presence to it like it's huge it's massive it's 5.24 centimeters long it's got this presence to it as well which doesn't matter who it is they turn around and they look and when you park the car they look at you to see who's coming out. When you're driving past or you're next to someone, they look at you to see who's driving. Like it's just, yes, I've made it. I'm in the seven series. <laughs> oh, anyways, with obviously being over a $200,000 car, you're probably gonna be wondering what makes this so special? Because at the end of the day, you're not really, you're not buying an over 200 grand car just so people look at me that would be a bit silly there's a few things there's a few things and the first one is obviously ride comfort it is smooth it is comfortable and it's like floating on a cloud almost almost i've driven the s class and i've driven the ls i don't think the 7 series is quite as comfortable as the other two and there is an asterisk there is an asterisk because I think the 7 Series is by far the better handling of the other two. Like the other two couldn't handle. Like the LS, that, that's pretty good for such a big car. But that S-Class was all over the shop. Look, I've been driving this car now for two weeks. And I think what makes this car just that cut above is that it's intuitive. And... <laughs> Yes, it's a very weird thing to say intuitive. What does that even mean in a car? It's things like this. Now, I have my key, and my key here is a smart key. It's this one here, it's got the screen on it. And that smart key allows me to unlock and lock the car. It allows me to set the temperature in the car before I set off. So if I set off, let's say at 8 p.m., I can tell it I'm leaving at 8 p.m. and it's going to preset the internal temperature for the temperature I like. 
yeah that's right it, you can preset the temperature in the car like okay that's one thing the third thing on this very special key is that you can actually move the car forward and back out of your spot you can turn the car on and you can press a button on this remote and push the car out of the spot and pull it back in now you're walking up to the car so you're walking up to the car and the car automatically detects that your key is in the vicinity it takes about two and a half three meters away what i've realized and it unlocks the car for you so it unlocks the car for you it turns the car on and then all the electronics are already on so it's already connected to your bluetooth you sit yourself into the car you put your foot on the brake press start the music from your phone's already playing because it's already connected to the bluetooth you put the car into drive and you set off oh and wait there's more because if the car detects that's under 20 degrees or whatever you set it to it doesn't have to be 20 i have set the car to automatically turn on my seat warmers to full strength turn on my heated steering wheel as well the heating seats also means that your armrest is heated and not only this armrest but this armrest too like how good is that <laughs> that means that i've jumped into the car the car detects that okay yes outside it's 19 degrees you got your heated bottom heated back you got your heated hands but then you've even got your heated armrest and then you know what the problem becomes is which arm do i want to heat my left or my right my left or my right and then it becomes quite a pickle and then you're doing this you're like oh no we need to drive and then i can set it that's over 20 degrees or 24 25 wherever you want it to the cooling seats come on and everything else is turned off it's stuff like that which make this car special the car even has perfume in it yes perfume like you've got fragrance settings and you've got two of them so i can just put on my fragrance right here and now i get this nice musk to clear out any odors in the car <laughs> perfume in the car i have to say like the finish of this car is insane it is so well appointed the leather and the dash and the wood finish on the trim and all the ambient lighting at night it's just so classy that is a that is that is bmw well done you have done incredibly well because the finish on the car is insane but it's got a lot going for as standard features like all your controls and your steering wheel of course all your safety system controls lane assist lane departure warning adaptive cruise control um blind spot monitors now i would love to show you these features but this car which isn't even a year old has malfunctioned you probably won't see it on that screen there but over here it says check control driver assistance restricted you can continue driving driver assistance permanently restricted if problem recurs have a check by your service partner it's not even a year old car bmw how can something go wrong i'm not two hundred and fifty thousand dollar car like that blows my mind why is that wrong? like why has that malfunctioned why it's only got eight thousand kilometers <laughs> i i don't know i don't know so i can't talk about those but we can talk about everything else and luckily there's a lot to go through so that huge 12 inch screen here in front of us this nicely sized 10 inch screen in the middle and yes i know what you're thinking how does the screen in front of you become bigger than the screen in the middle i don't know what bmw was thinking but i have to say the quality on it it is so clear like it is ridiculously clear i have to say it's i'm actually happy with that what i'm not so happy with is the screen adjustability of the one in front of me and what i mean by that is that you can't really adjust any of 
the stuff in front of you. Now, on the left hand side, you've got your odometer. In the middle, you've got your map. On the right hand side is the only thing that you can change. And <laughs> the things that it changes to, and this is what really gets me, there's only one button to change your screen on the right. And I changed from music, tells me what drive mode I'm in, tells me my battery voltage, my total kilometers, my kilowatts and newton meters. So, well, that was <laughs> it picks up quite nicely. Um, my G meter, yes, because in my seven series, I need to know my G's and to my music. So this car here has, of course, your air suspension, which makes sure to absorb all the bumps on the, on the road and to make sure you're driving and it's very smooth and supreme. However, I think that with BMW's nature, it's just that little harder ride compared to the S-Class. So it's really, it's really touch and go because the differences, I mean, they're very, small nuances but if you were to drive them back to back you would feel the s-class to be just that touch bit softer now bmw goes through extreme lengths to make sure that the car is very sound insulated so they have fitted 5.1 millimeter thick glass on the car on the sides and you'd think that would make the car a whole lot quieter and unfortunately i don't think it does I can still hear a lot of the other road noise of cars beside me and as much as I want to say I'm separate to the world, I'm finding it really hard to experience that. Because I can still hear a lot of the outside noise. But it doesn't mean that this car isn't smooth, it's, it's very smooth. I'm being very pedantic here because let's face it, you're going to be spending $250,000 on the car. You want it to be the best of the best. And the only car I haven't driven, actually, I've just pulled up next to one now, is an Audi A8. And it's funny because here in Australia, the cars you see least of in terms of luxury saloon cars is the BMW 7 Series and the Audi A8. And I don't know why, well, I didn't know why until I drove it because that brings me on to the five things I don't like about this car. Okay, so the first one is the screen in front. Um, it's really not quite bright when you need it to be. And because it's all automatic determining, you know, how bright it needs to be, it's quite dim at the best of times. Sitting in the back, you only get like that much room on top of like headroom. And now for me, it's not bad because I'm not the tallest fella there is. I'm only 5 foot 11, so it's got like an extra inch above me. If you're over 6 foot, in a car as big as this, you should have more space in the back, like for your head. It doesn't make sense. The amount of sway in comfort, like it just sways ridiculously. And I think it has something to do with the very vague steering. Like, yes, it's got electric power steering, and it's just so vague, you know, it's it's really like, look, I'm turning, well, like, that was a three-quarter turn to go around the roundabout. Now, yes, to get rid of that, I can put it into sports mode, and if I go here into sports mode, well, it stiffens everything up, and oh, my steering becomes a little bit more direct, but not by a huge deal. But the thing that annoys me the most is how the BMW brakes. And what I mean is that anytime you go to brake, it is you, it's, it's downshifting while you're braking in a way which means that I can feel every downshift when the car's braking. And I'll show you. So we're coming to a stop, we're going 30, downshift, downshift. And you feel it, there's like that little bit of a jerking sensation almost. Downshift, 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 
downshift. Because what's happening is like as the car's braking, instead of like the inertia going forward, it's like forward, back, forward, back, and stop. And there's that final jerk. Like I was going 30 k's an hour. It shouldn't have to jerk that much. Doesn't matter how hard you try, no matter how softly you go, there's always that jerk. And it's like every car has that jerk. Of course, every car, the S-Class, the LS, they all have it. But it's so extreme, like it's so noticeable in the BMW. Like, I'm going 50, downshift, downshift, another downshift, final downshift. And you can feel it every time. And another thing, you know how the car has start-stop technology? It's stopped the car before you've even come to a complete stop. So literally, <laughs> I was testing this out. When I'm already going like 4Ks per hour, the car's already turned off. Like, <laughs> talk about fuel saving. Oh man. Now this car here is around $250,000 on the Australian market. That's a lot of coin. And I really find myself asking the question, is it worth it? Is it worth that much?